Merry Christmas everybody. Well, not quite. Um, that we will eventually get some more Christmassy decorations, but it is still um, early November when we're making this. Mm. I don't yeah. generally put trimmings in the kitchen. You but... don't. Well, you don't generally like. You don't like tinsel and no. paper stuff, do you? I love no. it. Proper proper eighties and seventies Christmases. I like. You don't. A bit of a snob that comes Christmas. Now, look, I have found one of these. Let's call it. But Merry Christmas. Um, th yeah, these are chocolates, but we don't need them for now. But we are doing a seriously chocolate dessert. See that? How I yeah, that was that seamless. In? Seamless, wasn't it? Right, don't need that. So, welcome to my world. Uh, my world is puddings, really, and mess. Uh, Kelly's here to keep an eye on me. <laughs> uh, so, today we are looking at the BBC Good Food Christmas edition. What, December of Christmas? Well, it's December edition. They're doing another one in December, which yeah. will be January, but they're kind of both. So this is like part one. Yeah. Um, and we've got a few recipes from this. I am doing chocolate truffle and honeycomb torte. What's not to love? Yeah, That's chocolate, easy. chocolate, chocolate. Um, dead easy. It's a no cook recipe, but there is some melted chocolate we have to do as well. Okay. Is there a picture of this said dessert? Well, there is a picture on here, but I'm not necessarily going to show you the one on here because it's not going to look like mine. Okay. So, um... that, that's what it should look like when we finish. Okay. <laughs> Look at that. Just so you know what it's supposed oh, to look like. Okay. Right. okay, so we need to turn a page first, that's quite good. Okay, so this is easy. Ingredients wise, it's some double cream, some golden syrup, lots of cornflakes, lots of chocolate. Okay, and um, some of the chocolate is uh, crunches, or as they like to put it on there, honeycomb, honeycomb bars. Chocolate coated honeycomb bars. We all know what they mean. So, First of all, we're going to get a bag, we're going to stick in a sizable amount of crunchy, okay? About two thirds of the crunchies that we've got. About two and a half of yeah. multi-pack We're parts. using a multi-pack because they're cheaper, but obviously they're smaller. So ideally you needed three 40 gram bars, we've got four 30 odd grams. Yeah. Okay? So, so two and a half in About two bag. and a half of those, or two thirds of your Chocolate normal allowance. Bag, okay? Set that one up, back in the bits. And then get the cat to death then, okay. I know, frighten the cat. Um, literally smash this as fine as it will go. We'll come and do that in a second, so we'll carry on doing that in a little while. Whilst we're doing that, you also need a 20 centimetre spring form tip. Or eight inches. Or eight inches in old, in old money. Um, we have got these, these are very cool, okay, uh, they are cake liners. Yeah. Where do we get them from, were they Sainsbury's? We got them or? from Sainsbury's. So they're, they're widely available, or just get yourself some baking parchment or grocery paper, and line the cut bottom. yourself a circle, stick it in the bottom. No greasing we've been noticed on this. No. That's going to be fun. Um, but well, it is I a spring form tin. It's a fridge cake. Yeah, it's a and fridge so cake. It'll just pop out. Yeah, it's a spring form tin, so it shouldn't be a problem. So, again, we'll put that to one side, we'll just crush up all this, and we'll get back to you. Easy peasy. Anything to use with a rolling pin yet? No? Okay. Don't tempt me, Mr. No, no, don't tempt, tempt me. me. Right, so we have smashed up, or I have smashed up, the um, honeycomb bars to not quite within an inch of their life, otherwise it'd be dust pretty much that but it's pretty much that it says fine lace is what we're doing so you tip all that into a large bowl and to that you add your cornflakes okay for obviously for the measurements that you'll you'll see all those details on the list below you add those to that we can mix this up in a second but we don't need to do that right now it's put to one side because we're going to melt some chocolate right it is boiling Okay, so Kelly's dealing with the hot stuff. Um, yeah, obviously, I'm doing some recipes this Christmas that children can do, big children can do, um, because it's no, a no-cook one, the kids can help with this one, but get a parent or a was it responsible, responsible adult, adult to do this bit. So what we're doing is we're melting some chocolate, 500 grams of dark chocolate. Sounds a lot, but it's got a big cake to make. Now, they recommend at least 70% cocoa solids. So we're talking dark chocolate, you can get a lot stronger ones, but we've gone for 70, 72. 
Um, but I did add or replaced um, with two bars of this 55 dark milk. Yeah. Because some people don't like really strong dark chocolate mousse, so we kind of mixed it, but make sure most of it is predominantly dark. Yeah. Doesn't matter, all brands are very useful from Sainsbury's, but hey. They go in the bin, my love. I'd suggest, personally, that you buy eating chocolate and not cooking chocolate. Yeah, no, do your proper cooking chocolate, and let's not bother with Bourneville either. It needs to be a decent high cocoa solid. That you would eat. That you would eat. Yeah, yeah. not cooking not chocolate. Not cooking chocolate, no. It's got a funny taste to it, I think. It does. My mum used to do cooking chocolate a lot when she used to make cakes, and it always had a bit of a strange. I think it's flavor. okay for, like, chocolate chips. That's mm. okay. But when it comes to, like, something like this where you're using a whole lot of chocolate, then... So what we've done here is we've got a... We're not boiling it over a hob or anything. The idea is we've got a bowl of water, bowl, uh, sorry, a saucepan of water. Boiling water. Boiling water straight from the kettle, nothing else to be done. Put it into a heat proof bowl, the chocolate, and we're just going to melt it. And it's going to take its time. Then we'll gently stir it. Well, Kelly couldn't, could not actually gently stir something. Um, let it melt. Give it time. Don't rush it. Don't stick it in a microwave. We, we all know microwaves will melt things, but the problem is if it over melts in a microwave and it's very difficult to judge, it crystallizes. Yeah, it goes and gets bad. So let us come back to this in a second. We're just gonna Wait. let this melt. Let's let it melt. Yeah, we're gonna yeah. chill. Chill. Let's have Patience. a moment of mindfulness. Yeah, a moment of mindfulness. So let's do some breathing. In, or in through the nose, out through the mouth, is that right? Oh, don't really matter really, as long as you breathe out again, otherwise you're a bit problem. <laughs> yeah, true. Uh, we'll be back in a second. We've just got some tiny little blobs now, but I can see. Okay, so we're nearly done. You can see why people like working with chocolate, can't you? It's very relaxing, actually. It's taken, well... Ten minutes? It's like ten minutes, yeah, about ten minutes to do this. But honestly, treat chocolate gently, with a bit of respect. We're done. We're done. Let's move on to the next stage. Okay, so we're back. Thank you very much, responsible adult. Right. Uh, so we have now, I say we, have melted the uh, chocolate mix and it's beautiful, silky and smooth, we're saying right now. Yeah. Um, this is the cornflakes and the crunched up honeycomb. Mm -hmm. We need one fifth of that in that. Yeah? Right. Literally enough just to stick, well, it together. stick it all together, really. I'm reckoning a couple of spoonfuls. I'd say probably three. Maybe three, yeah. Really hard to judge. It just says 100 grams, and there is 500 grams of chocolate, so a bit more? Just a little bit, yeah. A little bit. Right, two and a half, then we'll go for that. Um, and now, just basically mix this up. Keep mixing it up until it's all coated as best you can, and then we're going to press all this into here. Make sure base. Come back to us in a couple of minutes. So, tell us, Jess, sir. Uh, Finishing off for demonstration purposes, I have actually done the stirring. You did it all by yourself. I did it all by myself. I did. Right. Um, we're also saying that you don't need to completely coat all the cornflakes so they're, they're just covered in chocolate. It's going to be a bit of a mix, but the idea is they all stick together when eventually you pop it into this. So let's do that next. Chocolate's good. Right. So that now, as I said, it's, it's pretty much coated. But it doesn't have to be completely coated, not no. like a chocolate crispy bun, no. a chocolate cornflake cake. So, this all now goes into here. Remember the mess, love? Should Remember the it? mess situation? Right. Look how good I was at that. Okay, and this now has to be pressed nice and firmly in, okay? This is, ba is basically your base, but it's, it's not also your top. Mm. Because this will, this will be turned round upside down in the end. It'll be inverted. Inverted when it's all set. So, press it all nice and even if possible. Relatively even. It's a homemade cake. Look, good love. Take your time. That's all. You just need to take your time. There's no rush. Oh, don't do time. It's going to be in the fridge for four hours. Come on. Right. Go on, that's done. She, she had to do. She had to do a little bit, didn't she? Right. So. Now what? Well, now you can put that to one side slightly, because right. we have to bring back... Careful. Yeah. The chocolate in the hot water. What do we to do with this? Um, we don't need that now. So, to this we add the rest of the ingredients, which are three tablespoons of golden syrup. You get the spoon, I'll do the squidging. 
Round spoon or other one? Make a difference. Okay. Three, you said? Three, yeah. One. This is when I, this when I quickly check it. Well, it's three, yes, it is three. Mind your problem. Round up, fine. Oh, she's not worried, don't she? I can clean a table afterwards, you know. I'm trying, to, I'm trying to be a small child here. Yeah, two, yep. Yeah. Let it drain out, John, otherwise you're not getting what's in there. I'm sure there's plenty. I think it's going to be sweet enough. There we go. Three. Three generous tablespoons of golden syrup. Please note I won't like to play with the golden syrup. Spoil for it. And this is still warm, but the idea is you put the cream in. Right, so I'm going to take the bowl out of the hot water now then. Yep. I'm going to move the saucepan over to the sink. Mm -hmm. Now we add in the 400 mils of double cream. All in one go? Or? Yeah, it's just got to go in and mix it up now. You're making like a chocolate custard now. No, the problem with that... It's going to go cold. That's why you want to put it back on the... Get the thing back over them. That's why I want to put back on the water. So keep it on the wall, sir, because the chocolate starts to harden again. Yeah. My Dolly Dealer said remove the water. Well, you said, yeah, it was done. And I just keep mixing this now until eventually it all becomes an amalgamated gunk. And then we'll come back. So when you first put this in, it does look like it's not going to ever get together, but it does. Keep working it. And you'll be surprised how dark it suddenly becomes. Yeah, don't do what we did and take it off the heat in the first place. Yeah, I think it just makes it a lot easier to just do whilst it's still in the water. Yeah. Any more of that cream left? Oh, a little bit of dragon there. Tiny, tiny that. Well, I might as well get it all in. So you kind of made a chocolate mousse, but it doesn't have the lightness of it that you would when you put in egg whites, etc. We will be doing a chocolate mousse. We're doing a couple of different versions over Christmas for the channel. That's coming up nice and shiny again. It's right? coming up nice and shiny now. Go around the side because that seems to be where most of the chocolate is. And also with this, you don't have to be too gentle because you're not making a mousse. No. So you're not folding in egg whites, your chest. I think that's perfect. I think it's, yeah, I think it's fine. So then what do you do? Well, this then gets basically poured into that. All right. So another reason why you didn't necessarily need to coat all the cornflakes because obviously this will go in and then set to the yeah cornflakes bottom of the cornflakes or top of the cornflakes right now. So you bring that over, my darling. So I'm just going to show you this. There you go. Looks good to me. I think we can now take away the water. Yeah. Oh. And you get all that lot in there. Oh, it might be the best way to land it. I hold the bowl when you pour it. Yeah, I'm just thinking about the drips of water, that's all. Don't worry about the drips. Right. Just pour all this into there. Look lovely, actually. Let's be honest, what's not to love about any kind of heavily chocolate based pudding? Unless you're Kelly, of course, when you're not that keen. I'm not a chocolatey person, really. You're not. I think we got it all, haven't we? I think so. I think we did a good job there. Did she just say I did a good job? Right, so gently spread this out so it's fairly even. You oh, do the tap afterwards. You don't have to wobble it yet. Tap. You just wobbled. Right. Right, done. Got quite a lot more on that side than there is that side. Am I? Well, it's because I got dodgy eyes. <laughs> yeah, I got one predominantly stronger eye than the other. Mr. Eva, if you're watching, I'm sure you'll know. Right. Can't waste that bit, can we? No. Quite a fine little spoon or a knife. Not a sharp one, though. I've got a nice sharp knife. There we go. Lovely. Isn't that the cook's perk now? Yeah, you can lick the The perky cooks. Yeah. Lovely. And that is it. What you do now is just tap it, so it says, pop it in the fridge. Right two, to, two to four hours. 
I'd say four hours. All right, Joe, we'll be back. And then we'll finish off. Yeah, you're in. Right then, everybody, three to four hours have elapsed. Um, if you're hearing noise in the background and see the mess, we've actually been creating quite a lot of videos today. You'll see all those in the fullness of time, or and maybe you're ready. We are in the middle of cooking our we're Sunday We're in the middle lunch. of cooking well, our Sunday lunch. Which is tea time. We always have our Sunday lunch at tea time. At tea so. time, yeah. Um, we're also testing out some red potatoes, another reason what we're doing that for. But we are here to have a look at the chocolate torte. It looks set. Yeah, that's certainly got no wobble. No wobble on there. So it's getting us just run a, a knife around the edge a second, so it says. It says use a cutlery knife. I'm assuming that's just any old knife. It's just really to loosen the sides. It's not going to be the prettiest thing on the edges. It wasn't designed to be. I'm letting uh, Kelly do that. She's better with knives than I am. I could be good at throwing them. Yeah, try throwing them. Right. Right. Yeah, we're there. Right. So you get a plate and we turn it out upside down on the plate. Lovely, that looks good to me. That looks good. Whoa, look at that. Uh, that looks like what it's supposed to look like. Looks like what it does on the tin. Right, now, just to add a bit of pizzazz on that, we have to chop up some more honeycomb, more, um, you know, branded crunches. Just gonna roughly chop these up. We're also gonna add a little bit of flake because we can just, just really just making a topping now but more just more chocolate on top of all other ready chocolate really i'd suggest if you get headaches or migraines yeah. from chocolate you probably don't do this one it, it, we're <laughs> discussing it's a migraine waiting to happen it really is but in a lovely way there you okay go. so there's one i think we need a second one i think you should put the honeycomb on first i think you put honeycomb on first yep yeah. Look at that. That uh, looks pretty damn good actually. In a lovely kind of messy chocolatey way. Uh, we're going to take a photograph of it and then we'll try and cut a slice. They say, I think, put it the knife in hot water. Makes sense. Yeah, and then cut it through. Okay, so we've taken the photograph, um, hopefully. Um, we're now going to cut it, see what happens. We have a hot blade. So hot blade, blade, that's how they say. It's only got a crunch, hasn't it? I suppose it would have. Oh my goodness me. Yep. You said a small size, Ow. that hot blade? Yeah, that's a hot blade. Yeah, that's each point hot blade. Yeah. yeah, it's gonna be one of those things that's gonna crumble a bit, I think. But there we go. That looks pretty good. I'll do a close up for you, everybody, so you can see. Migraine waiting to happen. Let's see. You can also turn that down and take a picture of that. Yeah, we probably out. can. We'll um, take a few pictures. So that's what it looks like, everybody. Looks very good. I suggest serve it with cream because it's going to be very rich. Or ice cream. Or ice good. cream, yeah. Sorry, it slid, that's all. Oh. It's also quite hard right now because it's just in the fridge. I reckon when it cools down, warms up a little bit, make it go more gooey. Hmm. It's very good. Yeah. Oh, it's rich. Mm. Do you know what though? The cornflakes make it. It does, doesn't it? Because if you didn't have the cornflakes, it would be so yeah. banging. But the cornflakes just lift it a little bit. Yeah, it's quite a solid thing. So just out of the fridge, give it, a, give it half an hour and it'll just warm up yeah. a little bit. Yeah, a bit like you do when you get your ice cream out of the fridge mm. or freezer. All right. That's a good recipe. Very nice, I'm just picking it off. You're I'd... picking it off, you're probably just taking the flake and going out now. No, yeah. I add a bit of the... There go. Good, good recipe. Dead easy. I've got to It's like a grown-up cornflake cake, which it basically is. Mm. Like a super-duper grown-up cornflake cake. Give it a try. Like I said, try it with double cream or ice cream. Give it about... 20 minutes to warm up out the fridge yeah and it'd be easier to cut and obviously obviously easier to eat with a fork very good 
Thanks for watching everybody. Please subscribe, please hit the notification bell. Do all those things. Come and join Big Oggy Golf. That's me. And me. Ellie on Big Oggy World with me. And um, enjoy the rest of our Christmas run up. Run up. It's going to be good, isn't it? Yeah. Happy so Christmas. Happy Christmas, everybody. See you soon. Bye.